today. We've talked to bankers who issue this stuff, get the deals done. We've talked to investors who invest in this stuff. How about the people who actually spend the money? Uh, we're joined by one of those folks today, Eric Russell. He's a treasurer of the state of Connecticut. Uh, he joins us here at, in our uh, offices here of Build America Mutual. He was elected Connecticut state treasurer in 2022, so we appreciate him uh, making some time for us. Eric, thanks so much for joining us here. What is a baby bond? So uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, so Connecticut Baby Bonds is a first in the nation program that we passed in Connecticut and fully funded this year. And the goal is really about addressing uh, generational poverty in the state. Um, and so for under the program, for every child born into poverty in Connecticut, there'll be $3,200 invested in a trust on their behalf. And that mm -hmm. money is managed by my office. And that money will grow over the life of that child. And between the ages of 18 and 30, uh, individuals will be able to access those resources for initiatives that are all about helping to build wealth. So they can use uh, those funds to help purchase a home in Connecticut, to start or invest in a Connecticut business, uh, to help pay for post-secondary education or job training, or to roll into a retirement account. Um, and we know one of the biggest indicators for someone's ability to build wealth over time is to have some capital to start with. Uh, that is a piece to this puzzle. But it really fits in with Connecticut's bigger picture, as we've made a lot of progress in addressing our overall fiscal health. It's also about looking to uh, making investments in people and investing in the future. So the you state. sold bonds to the public and took those proceeds to so fund this program? So we actually did not. So okay. the, the program was initially uh, proposed that it was going to be uh, bonded. So we were going to issue $50 million a year uh, for 12 years to fund the program for 12 years in total. Um, it, would be, it was going to be a $600 million investment. Um, and we passed that legislation back in 2021. There was some pushback to funding the program that way. And when I came into office, my main goal was to look at ways that we could fund the program and keep it viable, uh, but also do so at a way that was most cost effective to taxpayers. And so what we ended up doing uh, is we had a, a debt service reserve fund that was actually there to back um, bondholders from a previous bond issuance. Uh, with much of the progress that we've made in terms of our fiscal health, um, we were actually able to uh, issue a surety and release the funds from that account. We actually did that through uh, Build America. And um, we were able to take those funds and move them directly into the Baby Bonds Trust to fully fund it. Gotcha. Um, and the benefit there was, one, because we, are, we put $400 million, essentially, into this Baby Bond Trust. We have a longer runway to invest that money now that we're not issuing over a 12-year window. So we're actually able to cut $200 million off the overall cost of the program, as well as eliminate the uh, interest and in, in carrying costs for doing so. Um, and we're really proud of it. We actually just received the um, Bond Buyers uh, Innovative Deal of the Year Award oh, cool. for this transaction. Um, and so, you know, it was a, a really collaborative effort, but it's an exciting opportunity for our state. How easy do you think it would be for other states to replicate that? I mean, you've got to have the political will for it, but also you mentioned that you had to go through an unusual sort of financing move in order to get it done. And also, have you had any states call you up and inquire mm -hmm. about it? Definitely. So we've been having conversations with several states. There were states that replicated our legislation that was passed in 2021, and um, had some had moved that through their legislature and out of committee. Um, but there isn't any other state that's actually fully passed the legislation or funded it yet. Uh, we certainly have been uh, helpful. I am going to be, I've been in touch with several treasurers that are looking at this program. And I think different states are going to look at different ways of funding it. Um, Nevada, uh, their proposed legislation was to bond as we had initially uh, contemplated. Massachusetts has a similar program that they're going to be moving uh, through their legislature this session. But I, th I think at its core, I think people understand that there is uh, a really significant wealth gap in most states across the country, and it's a gap that's continued to widen. Right. And so as we look at ways to continue to invest in people, it's about really thinking at, looking at some of these um, more unique ways of uh, creating more fairness and closing some of these uh, really large wealth gaps we have across the country. All right, stepping back uh, as a treasurer, give us just kind of the, the state of the state in terms of the financial position of the great state of Connecticut. Sure, uh, the state is doing well. The state's doing very well. We um, were able to kind of withstand the pandemic well, um, and it was a challenge. Obviously, we're in a place now where we've uh, recovered all of the jobs that we lost during the pandemic. Uh, in 2022, we've had a net um, net 57,000 people that moved into the state of Connecticut. Um, and in just in terms of our overall fiscal position, I mean, we've made a lot of progress in terms of uh, paying down uh, long-term debt and uh, building up our rainy day fund, which we have at uh, its maximum uh, threshold right now at 15% of our budget. 
Um, and so, you know, and with that, we've been able to lower costs. We had the state's largest um, tax cut this last session. Um, and so I think it's the state overall is, is doing well. There's certainly things that we are uh, very mindful of in terms of work that we need to continue to do, uh, big picture in our state. But I think there's been um, really strong support for the direction we're moving in. You know, as it's a Muni show today, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about your thoughts on infrastructure investment. I mean, can you talk a little bit about what are Connecticut's needs and what are the big projects that you want to push through in the near term? I-95. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. For sure. So <laughs> I, you know, I, I think uh, in looking at Connecticut, one of the big pieces is housing, uh, for sure, as we're not alone in that. Uh, but I think both in terms of building more housing and bringing down the cost of housing in our state is really a big priority. I know this is a strong commitment of the governors, and I know it's something that I, I think the legislature knows would be really big for us. Uh, but I think to your point, I mean, transportation, obviously everything up and down the nine, uh, I-95 corridor um, and across the state, but really you know, improving times in terms of, of rail. I know that um, we've received a lot of federal money to really improve um, to get more trains on the tracks and to really improve time. Um, but I think we have to think bigger picture about these investments too and try to look at ways to marry um, transit with uh, community renewal um, and uh, really investing in communities, um, bigger picture. Um, and so I think that's what we're gonna see uh, moving forward from an infrastructure perspective. You know, from the pandemic, we had so many companies and so many individuals leave the greater metro New York area for Florida or Texas, or Tennessee. Um, how does the state of Connecticut think about attracting and retaining companies to the state? Is it all just about tax breaks, or how do you think about that? What's your strategy? So I, I think it's about continuing to invest in our state, and I think in we've had to look at ourselves and really um, address many of our kind of longstanding fiscal issues as a state. I think that is really important to business, I think in our ability to uh, lower costs long-term. Um, and so, you know, we've done that. I think if you look at our fiscal guardrails that were put in place in 2017, which have, you know, they created caps around what we can spend, what revenue we can uh, really count on coming in. We've been able to pay down nearly $8 billion uh, in additional contributions to our pension debt under those fiscal guardrails. Um, and so I think folks on the outside are looking at that knowing that this is a commitment for us big picture. But I think at the end of the day, we have to stick true to our values and why we um, are strong as a state. And I think it's the quality of life, it's education um, in our state. Um, and those are all things that we've continued to invest in. You mentioned that the, you mentioned the tax cut. Is there room for another tax cut, something to attract companies and indeed uh, to give families and consumers and households a break? I think you know the governor is certainly looking at ways to lower cost as a whole. Um, you know we're in a time right now where we see revenues softening. I think this is happening across the board. What's great is that our fiscal guardrails and the um, budgeting measures we've put in place have us in a really sound position that even with some of these softening revenues, uh, we are projecting surpluses. Uh, we will have by the end of next fiscal year, we'll be at about 18%, so nearly $4 billion in our rainy day fund. Um, so I th think there certainly is go are gonna be looking at uh, opportunities to lower costs for families. Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time here. Eric Russell, he's the treasurer of the state of Connecticut, joining us uh, here talking about the state of Connecticut and financing some of the growth initiatives uh, in the state. We appreciate getting your time.